when I pulled this transaxle out of the riding mower, I was pretty stoked. I thought this was going to be great. It was a uh, fairly robust looking. Nothing on it was broken. It had a forward and reverse built-in gear, and it had a little brake on the side, which I thought could use I could use for a parking brake. Went ahead and pulled it apart, and all the pieces on the inside looked good. There was no wear of any kind, no metal filings. So I cleaned it up, and oh, and another advantage is there was no mechanical difference between forward and reverse. They both had the same gear ratio, so I thought, well, this is good. I can mount it any which way I want. It doesn't really matter. So I cleaned it up and greased it real well and put it back together, and then I started dealing with gear ratios and that's when I realized there was a problem. Yeah, I did some math which is kind of scary but I was trying to figure out if the rear end from the lawnmower would work and I don't think it will because it's geared down too low. So the circumference of a circle is pi D so for a 20 inch bike tire it's 62.8 inches all the way around and that's 5.23 feet and there's 5,280 feet in a mile divided by 5.23 so the wheel would have to turn a thousand times to go one mile so I kinda want my car to be able to go like 24 miles an hour when the big people are in it in the high gear so we're looking at roughly 24,000 turns of the wheel to go 24 miles if you divide it by 60, that means each minute it would have to turn 403 times, 403 RPMs, which is pretty reasonable. The problem I have is that rear end is geared down 24 to 1, which means I'd have to spin that pulley 9,691 times in a minute in order to get to 24 miles an hour, and that's just not practical. It's just not going to happen. So I've taken it all apart. And I'm not going to use any of the gearing from that rear end, only the center chunk, which is the, um, the differential, and I think it'll work. So I'm going to open this back up to see if there's some kind of way I can use it. It's going to be messy because I put a whole tube of grease in it the first time I took it apart. So, let's see. That's the brake. That's the disc. Hey, this is pretty interesting. This is the universe. This is the differential part right here. It's riveted together, so to take it apart, I have to cut those rivets. But I think I could do that. I think I can cut the rivets and get a chain wheel for the drive chain, and use these bolts to replace the rivets with bolts and bolt it back together. I could I could braze these little holes solid and I could caulk this little crack. It just holds grease and there's no pressure. I could actually put a grease dirt in the little plates. Hmm, pretty interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut these rivets off. I hope I'm not sorry about that. And uh, open it up and take a look on the inside. Okay folks, cautiously optimistic here. Things pretty simple. Um, there's a a steel bushing in there and the shafts drop in there's no adjustment they just drop in the um, this gear drops on here and it's it really can't get on there wrong and then the little um, I don't know what all these gears are called but that's it this goes on top of that so if one, I can figure out a way to keep the grease in it, because that would be the only problem, is it hurling grease all over the place. And two, if I can find a chain wheel that I can bolt to the side of this uh, spur gear, 
Very light flame. This is uh, this is good news. My seamless slide into senility continues. I, I looked at the specs on the motor, and it takes the sprocket is for a 420 chain, whether whatever that is. Promptly went on eBay and ordered a big sprocket for the rear axle that takes a 428 chain, and I got it and I cut it and made it fit before I realized the error of my ways. So all of this is for naught, or <clears throat> so I thought at the time. But in uh, hindsight, it, it ended up working for the um, brake disc. So uh, I just got lucky. That's all there is to it, and a new sprocket is on order. So I got this random chain sprocket off of eBay. Um, not sure about the size. I wanted to make sure it was big enough. I can always replace it maybe with a smaller one. But this will make a, a gear, a good low gear to make the cart go slow in first gear. I cut the center out and I was trying to fill, figure out what I needed to do to attach it to the differential. And incredibly, the four holes line up with the cutouts in the sprocket. So if the cutouts are accurate, so according to the literature I found on the little car that I'm copying, they have a 30 inch wide wheelbase, that's how they're made, and it looks like it's comfortable for one adult or two little ones, and I was wanting something a little bit bigger, hopefully an adult and a child or two small adults, so arbitrarily I just picked a number and I'm making my wheelbase 36 inches wide. That's what I did on the front and on the back. Uh, that's what I'm doing. I cut and I'm, instead of trying to center the sprocket, I went ahead and made the longer side of the two uh, jack shafts, I guess you want to call them. I made the longer side even longer and I figured that would work out better because the sprocket on the motor is always on one side. So I just uh, dug deep, cut this thing in half added a short piece of uh, three-quarter it was actually another axle and uh, used an angle iron to get them all lined up and uh, tried my very best to put a good weld on it and weld a little bit on each side so it wouldn't warp and came out actually came out pretty straight so that um, we're good to go on the width now front and back time to start making the frame and I broke down and bought a saw from Harbor Freight. So no matter how bad this thing cuts, it's got to cut better than I cut freehand. And I actually purchased some steel. So it's a little confusing on how to make this frame since I don't do like CAD or anything. So what I'm going to do is make the um, back section where the motor sits and finish it. And then work frontwards from there. But I'm going to make it like modular. So Here I'm arguing with myself on how to proceed um, I wanted to, I was thinking the sprocket would be nice all the way to the right side which would put the motor all the way to the right side which would leave a lot of room open on the other side for batteries or whatnot but it physically wouldn't fit the motor would be too close to the tire to, to get any kind of um, frame around it or cover for it so I flopped it over and put the sprocket on the other side here I'm still under the delusion that I purchased the right sprocket and I'm trying to figure where a brake disc could go on the other side and I'm kind of like thinking about putting some sort of spacer between the sprocket and that gear um, which I ended up doing just with nuts and I eventually decided to flip the whole um, to put the axle on top of the frame the, the frame was just too high off the ground so the axle is going to be hanging from the pillar block bearings and the frame came out really flat which is going to make lining up the rear axle a lot easier so the weight of the whole back half of the cart will be hanging from the bolts that hold the um, pillar block bearings so this uh, tubing is fairly thin to keep it from distorting I put those little flat plates on the bottom outside edges okay my correct sprocket came in today early it wasn't supposed to come till Monday so this is exciting I'm gonna get this mounted on here I can mount this on the frame then I can mount the motor because I have something to align it with. Once I mount the motor, I can mount the bulkhead between the motor and the back seat. And then I can measure how long the frame is going to be. Man, I can just put the whole thing together. This is very important. Okay, sprocket is on and the rear end. Step one is done. Um, still going to take it off again. I still need to paint and 
caulk, keep the grease in there. Um, still need to shim this sprocket, which is the brake sprocket. It's a little off side to side. And I will still need to adjust this one that I just drilled. It's not quite round, it's pretty close. I probably drill oversized holes so I can move, up, move it on these bolts. And then I'll slip a washer with an exact quarter inch hole, snug it up, tap it around with a hammer until it's uh, round, and then I'll weld those little washers so those washers will act like the new holes, proper holes. Um, the frame is really flat, so this alignment's good. And for this alignment, I put the two aluminum extrusions, which are very accurate, and I have an aluminum straight edge I put back here. So everything's aligned, although I'm going to take it off again. But now I can mount my motor because my motor needed to mount line up with this. So good stuff. Um, just wrap this video up. Listen to the LSU game.